Accounts Receivable and AFDA Problem 7. The Allowance for Doubtful Accounts AFDA account had a credit balance of $7,500 before the adjusting entry for bad debts expense. After analyzing the accounts in the Accounts Receivable subsidiary ledger using the aging of Accounts Receivable method, the company's management estimates that uncollectible accounts will be $17,000. What will be the amount of bad debts expense reported on the income statement? This covers accounts receivable, allowance for doubtful accounts, bad debt expense. These topics can be challenging. We're going to make them a lot simpler. Now remember, when you have difficult topics, always go to what the question is asking. What will be the amount of bad debts expense reported on the income statement? Based on what we're given, we're told after analyzing the accounts in the account receivable subsidiary ledger using the aging of accounts receivable method or aging of receivables method, the company's management estimates. So this question is all about estimating bad debt expense. Now remember, under GAAP, under GAAP, the method that's required is the allowance method when it comes to bad debt expense, writing off bad debts and accounts receivable. The allowance method, remember, it assumes and understands that businesses, not all their customers are going to pay off what they owe. So at the end of each year, we do an adjusting entry to estimate the amount of bad debts expense to be written off with respect to the future, future accounts receivable to be written off. We are doing that in this question. We are estimating what bad debt expense is supposed to be with respect to this income statement for this year. Now, there's two major methods. There's the percent of net sales, I'm sorry, net credit sales method. And there's also the aging of receivables or aging of accounts receivable method. There are other methods, but these are the two most common you're most likely to see in practice, on exams, whatever. We're told here that this company uses the aging of receivables method when determining what the estimate is for bad debt expense. Now, specifically, the company's management estimates that uncollectible accounts will be $17,000. be $17,000. Now, when it comes to the aging of accounts receivable method, which is the method we're using here, the aging of accounts receivable method, it uses the balance in AFDA, in allowance for doubtful accounts, to determine what the actual adjustment is when it comes to bad debt expense for the year. Now, the percent of net sales, percent of net credit sales estimation, we ignore AFDA. When we're talking about the aging of receivables method, we do not ignore. When, we, when we're doing the aging of receivables method for estimating bad debt expense, we use the AFDA balance. So we need to know that we're told that AFDA had a credit balance of $7,500 before the adjusting entry. Now remember, anytime you have a question, debits and credits, some of your faculty out there, they love to focus on journal entries. I like the horizontal approach. So the best thing to do is, if you're ever remember, trying to remember debits and credits, write out DELOR, D-E-A-L-O-R, put a line down the middle. Remember, this is the types, the six accounts and how they increase. So they increase on the debit side to the increase on the credit side. The D is for drawing. The E is for expenses. A for asset. L for liabilities. O for owner's equity. R for revenue. DEA, increase on the left. LOR, increase on the right. Assets, that's what the A, A, A in DLOR, increase on the left. Now, AFDA, allowance for doubtful accounts, is a contra asset because it's the opposite of accounts receivable. Accounts receivable minus AFTA gives us net realizable value. So a contra asset has the opposite of an asset. If assets increase on the left, contra assets increase on the right, and the right is the credit balance. So AFTA, and if you're doing a T account, I don't really like to use T accounts much because it goes back to the debits and credits and journal entries. If you have a credit balance of 7,500, this is a positive balance. It's possible AFDA could have a negative balance because remember, it's an estimate. It can happen. Now, if we're told that, a, that the aging of receivables method results in un uncollectible accounts of $17,000, that means that at the end of the year, at the end of the year, AFDA should have a $17,000 balance. 
So that means how much do we need a credit AFDA or debit? Here it's going to be a credit. How much do we need to credit AFDA to get go from 7500 to 17000? Well, all we have to do here is we just have to subtract 17000 minus 7500 and that gives us 9500. And that is the correct answer. So what will be the amount of bad debts expense report on the income statement? It's 9,500. Now, some of you are saying, well, wait, we just did the adjustment to allowance for doubtful accounts. Yes, it's $9,500 adjustment for the year. Credit to AFDA. What do we debit? We debit bad debts expense. So that's why we're basically using AFDA to get the other side of the entry or the other side of the horizontal analysis, the accounting equation, to get us that $9,500. So we've just calculated the 9,500 using our AFDA analysis. And that is a lot of times how you have to calculate that given the information. One thing before we go, remember, 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 percent of net credit sales, we don't worry about the AFDA balance and the problem, we ignore it. We just take the percent of the percent given, multiply by the net credit sales, boom, that gets our bad debt expense. But when it comes to the aging of receivables, we do. We do care about the balance in AFDA. We're going to use that balance. And that's why we had to look at the 7,500 balance here to get the 17,000. And that's how we got the 9,500, which is the answer to how much bad debt expense we have on the income statement. It's $9,500.